Good morning, everybody. Welcome back to Gardening with the Landscape Connection. My name is Michelle. I live in Northern Illinois, Zone 5. Today, I am at my friend Fran's house, and we are going to be renovating a garden that went from shade to sun, because as you can see behind me, the neighbor lost a great big tree. So right now I'm standing in the shade and the sun actually rises back here behind me and it travels this way. So once it clears the tree, the middle of this bed gets a lot of hot afternoon sun. Now in the middle of the bed, we had this beautiful area that was planted up with the stilbees and we had all these different ones of different heights and different colors. And it was glorious when it was blooming, but they are starting to decline and die out because they're getting too much sun. So what we're going to do today is we're actually going to dig up the ones that are here and move them to the north side of the house where they'll be a lot happier. And then we're going to replant this with a different schematic of sun loving or part sun, part shade loving perennial. So this is my professional picture. But as you can see here, this is kind of the shape of what it is that we're going to be doing. It's kind of a half moon shape. And so we're going to be putting an anchor in the middle. We're going to be using a baptisia. And then we're going to put Black Eyed Susans on either side. We're going to be putting Veronica in, some Salvia. The corners get a little bit more shade, so we're going to be using some Jacob's Ladder. And then we're going to put a Rosane Geranium on either side here. So it's going to kind of have the centerpiece and then mirror out this way so that it's got this nice balance to it. So I know that's my real professional picture, but it, in a pinch it'll do uh, for me to have a plan so that I knew what plants I wanted to put in here. And also I knew how I wanted to lay them out. Oh, we're also gonna be putting some Asiatic lilies in the middle and we're gonna use the short ones. I thought I'd give you a tour of the garden bed. This is the very first bed that we did. And again, I think I put this in in 2016. And then every year we did another bed after that. So I'll give you a little tour and we'll kind of go from there. This is along the side of their house and this is the approach. And we actually did put in this paver walkway and then it leads to a patio. We did this with a unilock brick. This is called a Brussels stone. And then it's got what's called an El Campo soldiered edge on there so that it's got a contrasting color. And then we also did a path through the center of the bed that goes all the way around to the back part of the yard. And we used a big flagstone. This is uh, called number two contractors Fond du Lac flagstone, which here you get up in Wisconsin. So it's a pretty common flagstone, but I wanted these bigger pieces so that it made this big statement piece in the center of the bed to be able to travel. Now this over here gets quite a bit of sun. And what we've got here is a little Fafagilla. This is the Mount Airy and it's already done blooming. But when it does bloom, it gets these little bottle brush uh, blooms on it, which are really pretty in the spring. And then over here, we've got a nice collection of coral bells. And this is the Palace Purple and the Citronella. And so those have done really well. And then she's got a bird bath in between there. And then behind there, we've got three hostas. And these are the June hostas. And they are full size. That's as big as they'll get. And then as we put this in, we added some. This is the Baraboo Fractured Boulder. And I really like gardening and landscaping with fractured boulders. Everyone is different. They all have their own personality. Over here, we have some beautiful Karen azaleas. And as you can see, they just finished blooming. Too bad we didn't get here when they were blooming, but uh, those are beautiful and they are semi evergreen and they hold their leaves on them all season long. We have a beautiful service berry right here and it does bloom white in the spring. And then it gets this beautiful uh, green canopy on here and she does keep the bottom branches pruned out so that you can kind of see a screen growing through there and then it turns red in the fall. The more sun this gets, the more red the foliage will get in the fall. And what's really cool is this is what we call one of those no maintenance trees and absolutely gorgeous. So if you're looking for like a small anchor tree, these are beautiful and you don't have to do a whole lot to them. They just kind of grow. All right, so as we follow this plank way, you can see here, this is where we have our centerpiece that had all the astilbe in it. And they've really started to decline out. You can see holes here and all along the back edge and there. And so we're gonna be digging all of these out and redoing this whole area. Then if we look over here, she's got these beautiful concrete planters. Those have the surefire rose begonias in them from Proven Winners. And so they'll totally fill this pot out. And whether they're in shade or sun, they can handle both and they are drought tolerant. I mean, they just look good all the time. So it's a great plant to put in her pots. Then if we cruise along over here, we've got some Korean feather reed grass here. It'll grow in part shade 
Allure Full Sun, and it gets these beautiful champagne plumes on them in the fall. Well, more around August, so it does really well there. And then if we just keep going here, this is a witch hazel. And so she has already pruned this back, and this is one of the ones that will bloom in the winter, and it gets the little yellow flowers on it. Over here, we have some more Karen Azaleas, and this is her big, beautiful, glorious Crimson King Maple. And then we've got some big Francis William Hostas. And then back here, I don't remember what these are. These are rhododendrons. I just don't remember which variety they are, but they do bloom like a pinky purple, so they're really super pretty. Over here, we have hydrangeas. These are the Incredibles, so these are doing really well. They get the big white blooms on them. They're absolutely gorgeous. And then over here, she gets some more sun, and this is where we planted roses. And so this is a drift rose, and then we have a pink knockout, a red knockout, a yellow knockout. She just wanted this nice variety of roses right here. And over here, we have a, a lilac that is already done blooming, and this was the dwarf Korean lilac. All right, so we're gonna be renovating this bed and redoing the center so that she's got this big splash of perennial color right in the center. We chose things that are gonna bloom at different times so that she'll have blooms coming in and out all the time. All right, so the first thing that we're gonna do is we are actually going to dig out all of these astilbes. And we're gonna dig them all out. She's got a few weeds in here. We'll get those for her too. And then we're gonna to go to the other side of the house. On our way to the other side of the house, I thought I would show you this bed. We also put this one in here, and I love that we use these. Uh, they're called Catalina Edgers, and they're just this brick ed edger that we bought at a box store, and we use it to line the beds, and it just gives it this nice, neat, tidy look so that she doesn't have to edge the beds every single year. And in this bed, we have a hosta in the back. This one is called Strip Tease, and then we have the Zagreb Coreopsis, and these will bloom all yellow. We have some sedum here, and this is the neon sedum. So it gets this really super bright pink, neon pink color in the fall. We have some little viettes, black-eyed Susans, and those bloom yellow probably towards the end of July. We have some of the millennium alliums here, and so those get those little purple billy balls on them. And then here is, this is a white snow hill salvia. And you can see it's just now starting to want to bloom. It's a little bit later this year on everything because we had such a cold spring. And so that's what's in this bed. And then you come over here and we have a black lace elderberry. Now these can get really big, but she keeps this one pruned. And it's kind of wild because I have one on the corner of my house just like this. And so she keeps this pruned down. But I just love the dark foliage there, foliage there. And then here we have another Francis William Hosta, and it kind of goes down this way. We kept this pretty simple right here. Over here, we've got a wagon wheel, and we've got this old milk jug. And so this right here, this area doesn't really have anything in it, and this is where we're going to be putting the astilbe. Now, she knows that she's going to have to come over here and water it because the astilbe really needs a lot of water to be happy. Now, today, it is going to go up to 90 degrees, but as long as she keeps everything hydrated and we've got a deck above us that's going to create quite a bit of shade, uh, this probably will stress at the beginning and then it'll calm down. And as long as she keeps it hydrated and watered, it will recover and then come back in. It might not bloom as well this year, but we're not going after that right now. We're going after getting it established. Then if we follow this line down, we've got another hosta here that's a strip tease. And these are just now starting to uh, get bigger and I don't remember the names of every single one of these. I know that's a Francis William and I know that those are Patriots. I think this might be a Blue Angel, these two here, and they're just now starting to kind of emerge here. So we just did hostas along the side and these are actually the Capita U's and she doesn't cut them like little uh, Christmas tree use. She kind of let them grow into this funky shape, which I think is totally cool looking. It's so interesting. And then she's got a little Mugo pine down here. She's got a St. John's wort here, and she had three of them, and looks like she lost two and just one is surviving, so I know that she probably wants something else back there. She'll call me about that later. And then we come around here, and these are those low Sedona bowls that I was telling you about. And see how they sit on this pedestal here and they've got the little balls underneath that kind of raises them up. I just think those are so sweet. And what we did was we filled these with impatiens and this is the Amara purple. And then we put in the begonias, not begonias, we put in the coleus from Proven Winners and this is the velveteen. 
So these will fill the middle and then this bowl will just fill up. They're so gorgeous. Look at these fractured. These are actually fractured boulders and I found some flatter ones. Look at the iron ore that's running through those. Isn't that gorgeous? And every fractured boulder that you use, they're all different. So this Sedona bowl, you can see, see, we put this one right down in the ground and the other ones we elevated up. But here is a good example of goat's beard planted at the bottom of a tree. So this is actually a honey locust and it's got the really little leaves on it, but this grows right up against the base of this tree. So it does really well when it has competition. Hi, Fran. There she is. She's waving at me, peeking from around the corner there. Now check out these big bad hostas. Now these are hostas that are designed to get big. And when we did this landscape, it was, we want these to get big. We want them to be glorious. Look at those. They are just enormous and gorgeous. These are blue angel hostas. They are absolutely gorgeous. And then we've got the Francis William here. And then look at those beautiful fractured boulders. Another low Sedona bowl. And then some more of the same coral bells that are in the back are here and then a beautiful bench in the front. And then there's another goat's beard. So absolutely gorgeous. All right, so let's get to digging up and moving. All right, see, we're digging them up. And see what happens when you have a sharp shovel. Look how fast he's digging that up. Okay. Yep. All right, we're going to dig up, take as much of the root ball as we can. And then he's going to pick it up. And there it goes into the wheelbarrow. And then we'll be moving that over to the other side. Look at that nice clump that he got though. See, it rained last night. So it makes it easier to dig everything up too. Okay, so as you can see, we've got them all in place here. We haven't put them in the ground yet, but I can tell just by looking at them, like this is a vision series. This is a vision in red. This one is a Sprite. <laughs> and then I don't know what color these are back here. I think that they're pink and purple, but I know they're taller. So we put the taller ones in the back and the shorter ones in the front. And so we will dig holes, put these in. Then I will put down pre-emergent because every time you turn the soil, you turn weed seed that's down there. And then if it hits the light, it will germinate. And we don't want to create a weed area for her. So we will be putting a product called Snapshot down, which is the pre-emergent that we use. And it stops new weed seed from germinating. And then we'll water everything in, and then this little area here will be done. And then she just has to keep them watered. Okay, here we go. So I'm back. We have totally cleared the area out, and I'm going to talk about the different plants that we're going to put in this area. So let's start with our big centerpiece, which is going to be this beautiful Baptisia. Isn't that great? Look at the blooms on that. So this is um, just a false indigo. It's the regular one. It's nothing special or any special color but it gets these beautiful lavender, blue, purple uh, stalks on them. And it's gonna be the centerpiece of everything that we're doing because this is a garden that you see from both sides. So we wanna have this in the center and that way it's the big centerpiece and then we'll, we'll tear down on one side and then tear down on the other side so that it's absolutely gorgeous no matter how you're looking at it. The next plant that we're gonna use are these Asiatic lilies and look at the blooms on those. Aren't those gorgeous? Now, this is a shorter variety. This is called Tiny Pearl. And these are actually only going to get 14 to 16 inches high. They're going to grow in zones two through nine. Now, one of the beautiful things about an Asiatic lily is when they bloom, they're going to get a lot of blooms on them. The bulbs will multiply over time, so you're going to get more of them. So if this is something that you want and you want to be able to dig some of them up and move them, you can do that or you can just let them naturalize in their area and they're absolutely gorgeous. Now, Asiatic lilies, when they're done blooming, you can take the spent flowers off and then leave the foliage there and you don't cut it back. You kind of let that re-energize and soak up the sun so that it energizes that bulb down here for next year's blooms. Another plant that we're gonna use is this beautiful rosane geranium. I love these. They have these beautiful purple flowers on them and they have these deeply lobed leaves and the leaves on them get like this. And I love these because these are one of the perennials that will bloom for most of the summer. Once they start blooming, they continue to bloom and they do really well when they get like just part sun, part shade. I have grown them before in full sun and they scorch a little bit and they seem to do better if they get a little bit of protection, but they need some sun to be able to perform. And when you get that first flush of flowers, you get a lot of them and then they self-clean. And what that means is they push their flowers off and then they produce more flowers and they continue to flower throughout the whole summer. 
until a frost takes them out and then you just cut them back to the ground at the end of the season and then they come back the next year. Everything that I'm planting in this bed is a perennial. So that means they are gonna come back year after year after year. Yeah, and we love that. We have also done it so that different things bloom at different times so that she always has something that's blooming. So she's gonna have spring interest, early summer, midsummer, and fall. Something's going to be going on in this garden and blooming, which is what we're going after. All right, now this rosane geranium is gonna get 15 to 20 inches high. You're gonna space them if you're planting a whole bunch of them 18 inches apart. This is the plant that I talked about yesterday in my clay buster video that I planted and I ended up pulling out because I'm telling you, these plants got bigger than that. These plants were like two and a half feet tall and they were like this big around. I had three of them. It looked like this massive jungle. Now she has nicer soil than I did. Uh, so I'm hoping, and mine got a little bit more sun. So I'm hoping that these stay under control. But the one thing you can do is you can cut them back and then they'll flush again and be a little bit smaller. And you know, Fran is that person. I see her out here piddling in her garden all the time. She takes care of it, it's weed free. She does the things that I instructed her to do when I put the garden in and I gave her her care packet. She does all the things that you're supposed to do to take care of your garden. So I'm not worried about anything getting away from her in the garden because I know she'll take care of it. All right, one of the next things that we're gonna put in is we are gonna put in this beautiful salvia. This one is called Snow Hill. And I like the Snow Hill and it does better in a little bit more of a sunshade situation. Sometimes when you grow salvia and you grow the purple ones, they flop open if they don't get enough sun. And I find that the white ones stay in bloom a little bit longer and they don't flop open if they don't get as much sun as they need and they're a little more compact. So this one is called Snow Hill and it is going to grow in zone four through seven. And I'm sorry, I didn't say that about the geranium. This is zone five through eight. Okay, so zone four through seven, they're gonna get 15 to 18 inches high and they want full sun, but I have grown these in this full sun part shade. So this is shaded in the morning and then gets sun in the afternoon. So I think these are gonna be totally fine. These are absolutely gorgeous. Just look at those. I just think those are great. So those are the early summer bloomers. Now, another one that we're going to use is we are going to be putting in a Viet's Little Susie. This is a Rubeckia. And I love these because they're a little bit shorter than some of the other black-eyed Susans out there. The flowers are littler and they stay a little bit more compact. So I just think that they flower a little bit longer too. So I really like them. They're gonna grow 18 to 24 inches tall and they're going to need full sun in the afternoon. They're blooming July uh, through October. And one of the things that you can do, especially if you have a mass of black-eyed Susans, is right around the third week in June. If you go in and you just kind of sporadically trim some of them in half, you'll delay the bloom time on them because the ones that you didn't trim will grow and bloom just like normal. The ones that you cut back will actually grow and catch up to the other ones, but they'll be delayed. So they're gonna bloom after or kind of towards the end of when the first ones you didn't cut bloom, then those catch up and then they bloom. So instead of getting like six weeks of bloom, you get like 12 weeks of bloom. So that's a good way to extend the bloom time on the Black Eyed Susan. Now a word of caution with those is you can leave the foliage up in the winter and feed the birds, but just know that they can throw their seeds around and birds, when they collect the seeds, they can drop the seeds and it can end up in a bed across the way. So if you don't want them to do that, make sure you deadhead the flowers off of them before they go to seed. That way they stay where you put them. If a black-eyed Susan is happy, they can get pretty big around. So you wanna make sure that if you want more of these, they're really easy to transplant as well in the spring. So just know that. All right, another one that we're gonna do that does really well in part shade, part sun conditions is a Veronica. This one here is the Royal Candles. Some people call it Speedwell. Um, it's got these beautiful candles on there. They're purple. And if you cut them back when they're done uh, flowering, they'll actually flush again a little bit later in the season. Now, I like these because they do attract hummingbirds and butterflies, so I love these. So you'll get those coming to your garden because you have them. They're only gonna get about 15 inches high and they're gonna bloom from June through September. Now, they don't bloom constantly through there. The candles will stay on here and they'll just turn like a green color. But if you cut them back to the what we call the top of the, the basil or I don't know, the top of the foliage here, uh, then they'll reflush again. So that's a good thing to do if you want the two sets of blooms. Um, these are gonna grow in zone four through eight. And again, they do well in that full shade, part shade condition. 
Okay, another one that we're gonna do because on the ends of either part of this garden is a little bit more shade. So we are gonna do this beautiful Jacob's Ladder. This, in my opinion, is probably the best variegated Jacob's Ladder there is. This one is called Stairway to Heaven. Um, I think the Latin name, I'll probably mutilate it, is Polymonium. I think I said that right. So Polymonium. And again, this one is going to grow in part shade, part sun. It's deer resistant, rabbit resistant. We love that about it. It gets these little beautiful blue flowers all over it in the spring. So this will be that nice spring bloomer that she's looking for. It's only going to get 12 to 15 inches high. It only blooms in the spring. And so when it's done, she can go and give it a little trim and get the blue flowers off of it when they're spent. And then this is going to grow in zone four through eight. This is a napida. Aren't these great? Look at the flowers on this. They have this soft lavender color on them. And this is the walkers uh, or the junior walker. So it gets a little bit smaller. I do plant a lot of walkers low cap mint. I really like that plant as well. But this is a junior walker, so it stays a little bit smaller. Again, it's going to be deer resistant. It's going to grow in full sun or part shade. It likes zone four through eight. And it's only going to grow 14 to 18 inches. Now, one of the things that I love about Nepeta or Catmint is that it does grow in this nice, pretty clump. But if it does get too big, you can actually cut this thing down probably four to six inches from the ground. And then it'll reflush with new flowers and new foliage. And that way, if it gets out of hand, you can always trim it and make it look better. Now, I did bring some sedum with me. This one here is the Elsie's Gold. It's got this beautiful variegated foliage on it. Uh, foliage on it and then it blooms in the fall. I don't know if we're going to have room for it, but I brought it just in case I want to use it. Uh, but if I do end up using it, this is a tall stone crop. It's going to grow in zone three through nine and it's going to get 14 to 22 inches tall. I love the sedum because it grows in these nice little balls. It looks like, I don't know, little cabbages, but I love the variegated foliage on this one. And it gives you some brightness in the shade that you're looking for when it's shady. And then it shines and kind of glows when it's got the sun shining on it. So I'm going to go ahead and get everything placed where it goes. And then I brought some guys with me and they're going to help me get them in the ground. So we always recommend that you keep your tags. That way you know what you planted. And the other reason is, let's say you hate that plant. It doesn't do what you want it to do. You know not to plant it again. Or if you love that plant, you go get another one. So keep your tags. All right, this is a snapshot product that I'm going to be using. It is an herbicide, and I'm going to use it to stop new weed seed from germinating. Now, the one thing you can't use this with is bulbs or seed, because guess what? It stops the seed from germinating. Okay guys, so here we are with my friends, Tom and Fran, and this is their house, and they have so graciously allowed me to come here and film this. I am so privileged to be able to come here and work on these gardens. I just love coming here. She takes such great care of everything that she has here, and thank you, thank you so much for letting us film here today. I'm very excited about the new section, now that you've got this beautiful area that we can actually have some color perennials, and thank you again for letting us come here. Okay, so as you can see, we've got everything planted up. It's pretty exciting. I can't wait till it grows up a little bit. And then she's going to have all of these things that are blooming throughout the entire season. So she's got spring bloomers. She's got early summer bloomers, summer bloomers, fall bloomers. It's going to be so awesome. So I can't wait till it grows up a little bit. The guys are done mulching everything. We did put the pre-emergent down. So pretty exciting. So thank you so much for watching. I'm Michelle with the Landscape Connection. We'll see you in the next video. Bye, guys.